Hey Pewter Report listeners, James Hill here back with yet another video. Today we're going over yet another pro football focus ranking and it is the cornerback position which the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just paid Jamel Dean this past offseason after they had paid Carlton Davis the previous offseason as well. So they have a couple of highly paid, high-tiered cornerbacks on their roster. Will either one of those guys make it onto this list? We'll have to wait and see. But this is another cornerback, rank, or this is another position ranking, I guess I should say, going into the top 32 ahead of the 2023 season. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Sauce Gardner at number one is interesting to me. Me, personally, I'd probably have Jalen Ramsey at number two. Sauce Gardner had a phenomenal rookie season, by the way. Possibly one of the greatest seasons we have ever seen by a rookie cornerback. And I think the New York Jets really do have an absolute star on their hands. But me personally, I would still probably say Jalen Ramsey is the top guy in the NFL still. But number two is not bad either. Darius Slay, the Philadelphia Eagles coming in at number three. Patrick Sertain coming in at number four. Jair Alexander of the Green Bay Packers coming in at number five. Stephon Gilmore of the Dallas Cowboys. Still can't believe the Cowboys got... Gilmore for such a cheap price from the Indianapolis Colts. Marshawn Lattimore coming in at number seven. Trayvon Diggs coming in at number eight. You keep on going down this list and you get to the first Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Jamel Dean, coming in as a top 10 cornerback in the NFL. Let's go ahead and read what is written. It goes as follows. One of the league's most underrated cornerbacks, Dean finally cashed in this offseason with a big payday from the Bucs. He has four straight seasons with a PFF coverage grade between 74.7 and 78.9. And though he doesn't make a lot of plays on the football, he makes quarterbacks and receivers work for every yard. That is huge praise for Jamel Dean. And I think that this has been a mindset that has been on, obviously, local Bucks media and with Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans' minds for many, many, for the past couple of years, I guess I should say. I shouldn't say many, many years, but the past couple of years. These types of thoughts have been on a lot of people's minds. Jamel Dean has been getting significantly better every single year. There's a reason the Tampa Bay Buccaneers went through leaps and bounds to re-sign him this offseason. They knew they wanted to bring Jamel Dean back to this team. Very similar in the case of Levante David. They knew they had to bring back a guy like Levante David to, one, stay competitive as a football team, and two, just have really good players on this roster. Dean is no exception. Honestly, I think they got him at a pretty, pretty good price regarding his overall contract. So the Bucs are in a really good place with Dean. I think that you could make a legit argument that Dean is the best cornerback. I mean, obviously, according to Pro Football Focus, he is the best cornerback on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But <clears throat> again, I think that that is a very fair thing to say. Dean coming in top 10, by the way, is just... A really, really interesting ranking to see here. I think that you can't really argue with it based on what you have seen Jamel Dean do in the past couple of years with the Buccaneers. He's been getting better every, every single year, and it has been a very interesting thing to, to follow. I think that <clears throat> regarding Dean, from the moment he was drafted to now the current day, he has had the best growth out of any Tampa Bay Buccaneers player on this team Period. I mean, point blank simple as that. He is getting significantly better every, every single year. He's a top 10 cornerback right now, according to Pro Football Focus. Very, very, you know, good ranking here for Jamel Dean. He just got paid, and now he is getting the recognition that a lot of people feel that he deserves. Keep on going down this list to various Ward, San Francisco 49ers. And I will say this too, like I think the guys ranked above Dean are very fair. And what great company. You know, Marshawn Lattimore, Trayvon Diggs, J.C. Horn, Stephon Gilmore. Dean's right up there with those guys again. Very, very good ranking here for Jamel Dean making it into the top 10. Keep on going down this list. James Bradbury of the Eagles, Denzel Ward of the Browns, Tredavious White of the Buffalo Bills, Tariq Woolen of the Seattle Seahawks. Keep on going. You have Sean Murphy Bunting, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, by the way, checking in at number 19. Shout out to Sean Murphy Bunting. He didn't get paid too much by the Tennessee Titans, so this seems like a very, very good deal for them. You keep on, which, by the way, if the Buccaneers would have brought back Sean Murphy Bunting, if they would have had the cap space, geez, that would have been an insane trio of cornerbacks, but it was not to be. Keep on going down, though. You get into the low 20s. You still don't see any Tampa Bay Buccaneers here until you get to number 29, where you have Carlton Davis, which is 
you know, pretty interesting ranking for Carlton Davis. Let's go ahead and read what the paragraph says. Davis isn't coming off of his best year, but he still led the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cornerbacks last season with 11 pass breakups, more than double the next best total. He allowed an 85.5 passer rating into his coverage and his has elite size and strength for the position. And I think that that Carlton Davis, obviously, a lot of people have had this mentality, by the way, right? That Jamel Dean is the better cornerback than Carlton Davis. Carlton Davis is making a little bit more than Dean at this point. But firstly, crazy cornerback duo to have Carlton Davis coming in at number 29 and to have Jamel Dean all the way up there at number 10 speaks volumes to that cornerback duo. And you had Sean Murphy Bunting coming in at number 19 speaks volumes to the trio of cornerbacks that the Buccaneers have had and the growth they have been, that they have been able to showcase. Jason Light has done a very excellent job at drafting cornerbacks. But Davis coming in here at number 29, I think it's fair. I think that Davis did have a little bit of a down year last year. I think that if this was maybe... Last season, you would have certainly seen Carlton Davis come up higher up on this list. I think you honestly may have even seen the roles reversed, right? With Dean being possibly in the low 20s, with Davis possibly being in the top 10 or middle teens and whatnot, but now it's the reverse again. So if Davis does rebound and does show that ability and does <clears throat> have that you know, rebound type of year that, uh, you know, a handful of people are expecting him to have and he's able to showcase that ability that had him as a top-tier cornerback... You could make a legitimate argument that the Bucks have one of the best, if not the best, cornerback duos in the entirety of the NFL. I would say maybe not the best, but top 10, I would say, because of the ability of both these guys. They've got the size. In the case of Carlton Davis, he's got the physicality. In the case of Jamel Dean, he's got the athleticism. It's a good combo of cornerbacks. Point blank, simple as that. I think that both guys are pretty justifiable in this ranking. I think that Carlton Davis being a little bit down, still being in the top 32, though, which is still very, very good considering how many cornerbacks are on all 32 teams. It's pretty impressive to have two guys in the top 32. It's impressive to make this list, period. Carlton Davis coming in at 29 makes sense. He did have a bit of a down year last year in terms of his overall coverage grades. Jamel Dean coming up here at number 10 makes a lot of sense as well. Dean has been getting significantly better and better to, again, the point now where I think you can say that he is pretty much the Buccaneers' number one cornerback in terms of overall ability and overall well-roundedness. Dean's right now got the complete package. Davis obviously might not be as athletic as a Jamel Dean, but it's still very good, very physical in his own right. And both these guys fit beautifully in a Todd Bowles style of defense, and their rankings are justifiable in my opinion. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think about both these rankings? You have, obviously, Jamel Dean coming in at number 10. It's a very good ranking for him. Carlton Davis coming in in the ranking of number 29. I think that, that is a very fair ranking for him as well. Still made it to the top 32, however, but he did have a down year last year. What are your guys' thoughts and opinions on these rankings? I would love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let us know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below as well. Subscribe to Pewter Report TV if you have not done so already. And folks, we will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, folks, goodbye for now and see you soon.